Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Frank Cusimano. I am a doctor of nutrition and metabolic biology and also a current third year medical student. So if you follow me on Instagram, if you follow me on social media, you know that I am passionate about two things, nutrition and metabolic biology and medical education. So I, this has been a long requested video and something that I cannot wait to share with you because so many people have been asking me, how do you study for shelf exams during your third and fourth year of medical school? So I figured I'd make a video. So let's dive right in and go ahead and cover some ground rules. All right, so I do wanna lay some context before we really dive into how I studied and how I think you should study for the MBME Family Medicine shelf exam. A little caveat, after my second year of medical school, I went back and did a four-year PhD and turned those four years of my PhD in nutrition and metabolic biology. I didn't take a medical school exam. I took zero tests that were medically related. It was all about nutrition and biology. And so when I came back, my first rotation in my third year of medical school after being off for four years was family medicine. And to say I was concerned was kind of an understatement. I hadn't taken that type of standardized test and I was worried. Countered with the first week or two of my actual family medicine rotation, I totally goofed off and I didn't study. But the last two weeks of my rotation, I really buckled down and I really studied hard and I used about 11 different resources that I think you should take a look at. So let's go ahead and dive right in. I'm gonna cover all 11 and give my recommendation whether I think it was worth the time to delve into it. Some of them I didn't use fully, but I can kind of give you kind of a, a rough estimate of what I think is a good game plan. So let's go ahead and dive into the actual material. One thing before we actually dive in, I did want to make one recommendation in that you have to know that everyone's study style and plan is different and you need to tailor the way that you study based off of what you find works for you and not everyone will find that the same things work for them find what works for you and then stick to it if you don't do well one month that's fine your next rotation adapt use some of the same strategies that worked for you and then adapt to find ones that do work all right so let's dive into the actual material. The first, uh, the first resource that I recommend, and these are in order of what I think is a, of importance. The very first resource that I think is of utmost importance that everyone should look at for family medicine is, go ahead and it's on the screen, it's Case Files Family Medicine. And I used the fourth edition online. Um, I found that Case Files Family Medicine is just one of those resources that you cannot study for the NBME Family Medicine Shelf exam without. It has 60 different cases and it covers everything from pediatric illnesses to how to treat depression to allergic disorders and breast diseases and joint pain. I think it's crucial that you guys go ahead. I used the online version and that's why I'm showing it here. I used this because it really worked for me and our school gave us free access to the, um, the whole book online. And it was easy to click around. If you go ahead and click through dyspepsia and peptic ulcer disease, you'll see it has kind of a case and then it has, you know, the different approaches to how you would treat it, some clinical definitions, some different tables. And it really was a resource that I cannot recommend enough. All right. The second resource that I think everyone should look at is the USPSTF. And I'm sure you've heard this. The USPSTF is the US Preventative Service Task Force. Their website is a wealth of knowledge. And now their, their website has way more than you need to know for the actual family medicine shelf exam. So what I did is I actually used a later resource that covers all of the important things and kind of highlights what's really important. But if you have questions, if you want to know some of the specifics, go to their website. I'm sure your teachers have already pointed it out. I'm sure you've actually already been given slides that have all of this information on it. But if not, you can go to the source, it's the source itself, the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force, USPSTF. Yes, learn how to say that fast because attendings, residents, uh, senior residents and fellows will talk about it. They'll bring it up and they'll use that acronym and they're going to expect that you know it just as well. All right, next up, my third one is actually the Family Medicine Pre-Test um, Book. Now this has about 500 family medicine style, USMLE style questions that I think were exceptional and really teasing out what you know and what you don't know. I actually, 
Actually, next to me, I have the, this is the second edition. Um, the one I'm showing online is the first edition. Now there's actually four editions now. Uh, I recommend go ahead and trying to get the fourth one. I use the second, it worked for me. I thought that it kind of laid the ground rules. The ones that are different is there are some preventative screening guidelines and questions in the early chapters of pretest family medicine. And so I would use the newer versions for those or at least skip those questions because some of those have changed as the USPSTF guidelines have changed. And so I would skip those questions, but at least use the bulk of them because um, it's 500 questions that you really can't get anywhere else, but that tests the exact same style that you're gonna get when you actually take the shelf exam. All right, the fourth recommendation is Anki. If you don't know what Anki is, Anki is a program which allows you to remember things faster. It's kind of like the flashcards of, of the internet. It is a perfect resource for you to dive in and kind of go back and forth and figure out which questions you know and which material you really need to dive in and it lets you retake them. If you don't do it, just look up Anki. It's A-N-K-I. Click on their website, download it, whether you have a, a, a PC or a Mac, I believe both are available and it is you know crucial in really kind of diving it in. The Anki system you need to then download actual flashcards to use that you're going to be tested on. Now, there's a bunch now there's a bunch out there. If you actual Google, you know, USMLE or NBME Family Medicine Shelf uh, Anki Deck, if you look that up, there's a bunch of different recommendations. Here are my two that I used and I really recommend them. That is the Hoagie Med USPSTF.APG file. I the links are below, so all of the links are below and I I encourage you to download this one and use it. It's about 64 questions of all USPSTF that's updated to this current year. If you're listening to this to later years, no big deal. Just go ahead and look up Hoagie Med USPSTF and then download it there. I believe that it's being updated every year, but don't quote me on that. Go ahead and check. And I'm sure if not Reddit or Student Doctor Network or something will have it. The second Anki deck that I used is actually over a thousand questions, and that's the M3 underscore family medicine dot APKG file. Now, that deck has about over a thousand questions. It was crucial for me to use. Um, I didn't go through all of them. I probably went through about six to eight hundred of them, and it was a real fast way just to test myself. And even if I didn't have time to repeat the same cards multiple times, I at least got a refresher. And that I thought was really crucial. All right, my next recommendation is Online MedEd. So Online MedEd, if you don't know, Online MedEd is a free resource. You can obviously pay and do additional things like test your competency, do a pretest, do post-test, use different flashcards, use different practice questions. But the, the core of Online MedEd is actually in their, their videos and their video lectures. So you can, you can go ahead and log on for free. Um, it's real easy. You can pay for obviously the basic or the clinical. I am using the free version. Um, you can go to topics, click on any of the different disease process or any of the different systems, and then go ahead and click on any of the videos that you think are gonna be useful and that you wanna look up. So I didn't, re I didn't listen to all of them. I listened to, if you go ahead and look up NBME, family medicine, um, online med ed recommended videos. There's a list out there. Uh, I just kind of pick and chose what I felt like I needed a refresher. Remember, I was gone for four years. I was off. And so it was crucial for me to at least hit the topics that I knew that I had forgotten over those four years after taking step one all the way back in 2015. And so taking this in July of 2019, it was just crucial that I at least dive in and re-listen to the topics that I needed to re-hit because my brain just, you know, kind of forgot over four years and it ended up working out for me. Um, all right, the next recommendation I have is Step Up to Family Medicine. So Step Up to Family Medicine, I actually read multiple chapters on this one. Um, I only started member studying for the last two weeks of my entire four week rotation. And whether you have a two week rotation, a four week rotation, six weeks or an eight week, um, figure out what works for you and kind of fit some of these chapters in um, I studied the ones that I felt like I needed, at least the preventative care, the common symptoms, and the family medicine in context. Some of those early ones I think were crucial, kind of understand and lay the ground rule of family medicine. 
Um, again, I am going with the online version of the book that our school provided free um, for all the students. You can obviously get the, the paperback version or the hardback version. They are on Amazon. All the links are on Amazon. Um, and that would be great if you're really interested and you think that this would be a good one. I, the reason I thought about step one to family medicine, the reason I used it is because there's a step up to medicine book that everyone recommends for the MBME um, internal medicine exam. And so I thought this was kind of crucial to use. All right, the third to last uh, one that, you know, topic that I used was the actual MBME has their own um, clinical science mastery series exam. So you can test your knowledge on using USMLE style questions before you take the NBME. I know it's it's fabulous that they have this resource. Now, they only have a few tests that are 50, 50 questions in length. Um, it was great. I, I used I used two of them and they worked really great for me. They may actually only have two. I'm not sure you're going to have to look into it, but I used two and I would recommend taking one at about 10 days before and then take a additional one maybe about five days before and what that does is that teaches you where you need where your um, lack of competency is and then at five days before you kind of get a refresher and figure out really what you need to hone in on those last four days before uh, remember you probably only have a few hours to study every day one hour on some days maybe three to four hours on the other days just depending on how your rotation's going I felt like this was a good way to test my knowledge. Um, it's hard to study from these, but it's at least a way to figure out what you're gonna be tested on. All right, almost there. Second to last is actually the AAFP, which is the um, American Academy of Family, Medi or Family Medicine Practitioners. Maybe I said that wrong. I'm sorry for anyone who is heavily involved in the AAFP. I messed that up. But regardless, they have, if you become a member, it takes about three to four days to join. So go ahead and sign up for a free online student membership and then they will send you an email in a couple of the days. You can get logged in, use the, the username that they tell you, and then you can go to their board review questions. Literally, you can search in board review questions right here, and I will provide the link, but if you're not a member, it's not gonna go there directly. And then they have a bunch of random board review questions. So I started doing these very first thing when I started studying. I thought that these were like the gold standard. So each of these were 10. After about 30 questions, I realized that some of the level of detail in these were actually targeted towards the residents. So this is for for residents to practice to become board certified. So it is way more in depth. The short in, questions are a little shorter than USMLE style, but they're a little bit more in depth. So I ended up only doing 30. I had a, I had a buddy of mine who did close to 300. He did all, I think he didn't think he did 30 of them. So he did 300 questions and then he, he, he called it quits. I don't think you need to do that many. I think if you focus on the other things that I've recommended, I think you'll be fine. But go ahead and you know hit hit you know 20 to 50 and figure out you know if it's a style that maybe will work for you. If you want to do family medicine, this would be a great you know kind of pretest to figure out where you lie on when you actually start residency. All right, and last but not least, this resource. I know the founders of Board Vitals and I've interviewed them for my podcast, Surviving Medicine. If you don't know what that is, go ahead and follow my Instagram and then you'll see the links. Um, but I have interviewed the founder of Board Vitals and I love Board Vitals for several different things. I've used it for a few different study patterns here. I made a new account just today for this one. I wanted to show you that they have a family medicine shelf exam. You do have to pay for it if you want all of their questions, but it's a good resource if you want something that really structures your, your studying plan and actually analyzes how you're doing and where your weaknesses are. And so Board Vitals is, is something I'm gonna be using for step two. Go ahead and try it, see, see if you like it on some of their practice questions. I didn't really use any of their questions because I, I started studying late and I just had so overwhelming number of resources, but maybe it's the one for you. If you've used it before, um, it's probably a resource that's gonna be great for you as well. All right, that was a lot. Let's slide back over. All right, so that was my recommendation of what I think really are the top 11 tips and resources that you should use for studying for the MBME Family Medicine Shelf Exam. So guys, family medicine was a lot of fun for me. I probably don't wanna do family medicine, but I did love studying for the exam. Again, I did not go through all these material. I didn't finish all the case file presentations, not even half. I didn't. Um, I went through all the USPSTF. I figured I, I can confidently say I knew that cold. Um, all the Anki decks, I knew the USPSTF one, the M3, I probably did six to 800 of that over a thousand question bank. 
and I only did those over the course of a week. It was real fast. Um, online med ed, I watched the videos that I thought were pertinent to things that I knew that I had forgotten. And then step up to family medicine, I felt it was great. I read about half of it, um, kind of skimming it and figure out where I felt like my deficiencies were. And then the AAFP, I used about you know 30 other questions and um, the other one that I missed was the MBME practice exams. I did two of those at 500 questions each. And then board vitals. Those are the ones that I really think are crucial. Good luck to you. If you're taking this, go ahead and comment below. If you have any questions, leave it. If you guys wanna see my next board exam, so the next uh, shelf exam, not board exam, the next shelf exam that I'm taking is actually a COMAT. So it's one for the DO students. I'm taking that one in internal medicine at the end of this month. I'm confident to say that you guys will do well on family medicine. I studied for two weeks, hadn't taken a test in four years, and I passed it. And I'm quite pleased with my score after four years. So. Follow this advice, follow these resources, and good luck. And if any of the resources are out of date, like the Anki decks, go ahead and look up on Reddit or shoot me an email. I'll try to help you find it, but your guess is as good as mine. But at least you can look up the Hoagie Med USPSTF on Reddit or on Google, and I'm sure it'll pop up with the most recent one. Good luck, guys, and if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Go ahead and smash it, press that like button, and I will see you guys in the next video.